Yeah. Welcome everybody to um, Art with Jenny as part of Tipperary Library's Crinoon and Oak Saturday. Um, today we're going to be making a castle and that castle is made out of um, cardboard tubes from your kitchen roll and smaller tubes from your toilet roll. Now if you only have the kitchen roll tubes you can cut those in half for the smaller turrets of your castle. So that's what we're making today. Okay. Now, the other thing that we're going to make is a pasta frame. Okay, and the cardboard for that can come from a cereal box or a piece of cardboard from the back of something or a cardboard box. Anything at all would do for that. And you just need some pasta from the kitchen. Okay, so we get started with the castle itself. You'll need four of these tubes to start off with. We're going to paint those. Uh, you can paint them different colors if you like, but I've painted all of these ones orange. Okay, and it's just simple poster paint for that. You'll need two coats. Let's move these out of the way for a second. You need two coats of paint. So the first one is on and it's dry. So if you get that done in the next few minutes, leave them to dry for about half an hour. You can come back to the second coat. So we're just going to go through this pretty quickly and then I'll recap at the end. While your first coat of paint is drying, I'll move on to the pasta frame. Okay, because we won't be able to do much more than paint those. Once they're dry, then we can attach them together. Now, I think this video is going to be available later on today as well. So you don't have to remember everything in the next few minutes. You'll be able to go back and check over it. Okay, so just spread your paint out nice and thinly. Don't lob it on. One coat will dry fairly fast and then the second coat might take a few more minutes. So I'm just using poster paint. You can use acrylic if you prefer. Um, acrylic or poster paint are best, but I wouldn't use anything other than that. So these are the paints here, just any of those poster paints that you get from the shop. You can choose your colors. So what I've done is orange is nice and bright. The green works well as well, but you can go blue, yellow, purple, pink, whatever colors you'd like. So once you have your four big tubes painted, leave them aside to dry and start off on the smaller ones. Those ones then will need a second coat as well. So I'll just throw this on here now real fast. Okay, once those are painted and, and stuck together, stapled together, then you'll be able to put on the windows and the doors and any other little decorations that you want to add yourself. You could put on sequins, buttons, you use markers to paint um, in your details and all as well. So that's fairly simple once you have this part done. Okay, again, leave them to dry. If it's nice and warm in your house today, they'll dry quite quickly. Okay, the next stage while you're waiting for those to dry is to make the roof for your turrets. So what I'm using here is a circular bowl, not too big, like a cereal bowl size, or a compass and a pencil. Okay, place your bowl down on a piece of paper. You choose your colour. I've chosen the yellow because it's nice against the orange. Any colour at all of paper. Put it down on the paper and draw around it. I'll just use a marker for this so you can see. Hold the centre of the bowl. So it doesn't move. And there you have your circle. Now you're going to have that because these turret roofs are made of semicircles. So just half it down the middle. Okay, so you get something like that. Circle with two halves. And then cut that out. You're only small now, get somebody to help you with the cutting. Take your time going around the edge, try and say, stay on the line to get a nice semicircle at the end. Okay, keep your fingers out of the way, of course, of the scissors. Take your time. You see, I'm not moving the scissors, I'm moving the paper. So if you turn the paper, the scissors will cut through it more easily instead of chopping through it. Okay, and then down the middle. Okay, and 
we're going to use a stapler next to attach these turrets together. We're going to twist them around so we form a cone shape. So that's your mats for the day. You've got cylinders and cones. You can tell your teacher in September that you learned about those. Get your stapler. Now this is the best thing because it's sturdy. Glue might not work. Okay, it might not hold it, but sellotape would be fine too. So staple your little loop like that. Make four of those. Okay. And hopefully you'll have a staple that works better than mine. Okay, four little rooms like that. They're going to go on top of your towers, of your turrets. Okay, four little so four little um, roofs like that. Okay, put this down the middle again. Okay, now once your paint is dry, get those four. Um, parts of your castle together. You can play around a little bit there, see which one, which angles you want them at. That looks good there, I think. Okay. So the four of them are together. And then the smaller ones, place them just to see, you decide yourself where you want them to go. Okay, now my paint on this one's a little bit wet. So I'm gonna leave that one aside for a second. And before we stable these together, we need to cut in the crenellations at the top of our towers. Okay, because that most castles have these, the form of defense, and that's where the soldiers would have stood with their bow and arrow. So to do that, take your scissors and cut about two centimeters into one end of your tube. Again, if you're small, get some help with this bit. So I think it's going to be about eight slots that you're cutting and then fold down every second one okay so that makes your battlements on your tower okay we do that with all of those small ones now my paint isn't dry on this one so i'm going to cover it with orange paper instead just to show you if you don't have paint this is another way of doing it so place your Keep your toilet roll tube down on some orange paper, any colour that you have. Measure it from the top of the page to where it finishes. Draw a line. Okay. Like this. Cut it out. And again, you can use your stapler or you can use glue or sellotape. You're going to wrap the tube in orange paper and that will save you time you won't have to wait for that to dry okay get your stapler that's working really well and staple the two ends cut in your crenellations at least i think that's what they're called and press them down to make those battlements this gives your castle a really authentic feel starts to look the part. Okay, and you can cut as many of those or as few as you like into it. Okay, now we have three ready to go, one more. Okay, you'll see that this is going to take a little bit of time. Don't rush through it. Take your time, wait for the paint to dry and at the end you'll have a lovely job. And somebody said to me earlier on in the week that this will be a lovely activity to do at Halloween as well. If you want to make the spooky castle it's coming up now after the summer october halloween is coming you could make this would be a lovely present or it would actually even make a really good pencil holder right, so we have our four big tubes assembled we know where we want them to go we're going to staple them together now you might need a bit of help with this it's tricky so i'm going to start with the center one put my stapler into the tubes and staple them like that at the bottom. Holds it quite well. I'm going to do the same with the tube at the front. Okay, and 
one more big one. Okay, that's your four central parts of your castle ready to go. And then you're going to staple these ones on to the front and the sides. Remember, castle's main purpose was to defend the people inside. So they had a lot of tall towers and then they had areas for living as well inside as well as defense. So these smaller towers are their defense part where the soldiers would have been. And the taller ones then are where their families would have lived quite, quite safely. Okay, so there's two more attached on, you see that? And then the last two come out on the outside. So again, the staple to hold that. One on either side. We're getting there now. Okay, so we just recap on that bit there because we're nearly ready to put the little roofs on. So we have the four central tubes painted, two layers of paint, different heights works really well. If you want to change your heights, you can cut a bit off the top um, and make them slightly different. You can put as many of these in as you like and just try and keep it symmetrical. They would have added on to their castles as they went along, but they tried to keep it kind of similar. And then the four smaller tubes at the bottom, you can paint them or you can color them. You can use colored paper for those. Okay, next thing then are our little roofs. So we're going to attach those on, but we're going to use glue. So I have PVA or Pritt stick glue here, just putting a little bit around the top of my tube. Okay, each one, and that will hold it quite securely, hopefully. Go again here. On the other side, we had we were making four of these, weren't we? You might only need three if you want to do what I did here with the green one. I left this one with just the battlements, so you can do that as well. Like I said, you can do anything you like with this, it's up to you. Once you have the basic materials, the world's your oyster. Okay, let's put that on there. There's our three. How does that look? Yeah, I think I'll go with another one. The next stage, stage then is just to, oops, to decorate with windows. Now the windows in the castle were generally very long and thin. They were, as I said earlier, mostly for defense. They weren't really for admiring the view. Because if you lived in a country where you had to watch for invaders all the time. You weren't really watching out the window for the nice trees and the, the, the landscape. You were watching out for people coming to invade. So the little windows were very long and narrow. So I have a few here on the green castle. Okay, and those were as a form of defense as much as anything. In, in more peaceful times, the windows got bigger. Okay, so you can put your windows in nice and high up. There was no point in having windows down near the ground in these castles because they just, it wasn't safe. So you can just cut with a marker. I'm using a black permanent marker, but you could use any sort of marker. Put in your little windows all along there. And then in this one, I also put in some creepers and a big front door. Okay, so that's the castle. You, could, you take more time to make that now than I did. It could take you a couple of hours to get it right and decorate it and make it your own. Okay, so I hope everybody is happy with that one. We move on now to the pasta frame. And that caused me a few hardships yesterday evening to try and find paint that will go over pasta. You may have seen them before with spray paint i'm sure a teacher might have done it with you in school at some stage where you can spray paint the pasta um, we're not going to spray paint here in the library today 
Um, and I hope you won't do it at home unless you have somebody to help you. But we did find that acrylic paint worked really well. So the first stage of this pasta frame is to get yourself a piece of cardboard. Now, again, you'll be able to watch this um, later on. Piece of cardboard, this is from the bottom of a tray of cans, or no, not alcohol cans, drink Coca-Cola cans, or this piece of cardboard here is from the back of a pack of paper. So either of those, get a grown up to help you decide what size you want your opening to be in your frame. I've gone for the five by seven, or you can go with four by six inches because that's the generally the size of photographs nowadays so draw a box that size or draw around a photograph is also a good tip and then cut out the inside of your piece of cardboard okay. now that piece of card keep it because it can be used later on to hold the photograph inside the frame so you'll end up when you have it cut out you'll end up with a rectangular shape like this with a rectangular gap in the middle. Okay, and then the pasta that I'm using is this butterfly pasta. I like the little, little bows. You can use any type of pasta that has a good surface area because you want it to stick to the frame. If it's, if it's very thin, like spaghetti and things like that, might not work as well because you have to get a, a layer of glue onto the surface and it needs to stick onto it. Okay, so what we did discover when we were doing this one is that you're better off getting the wider part of the bow to stick and the little pinched part then is pointing out the way and that way you'll get more glue to attach your pasta because it's not a material that is used to being stuck. Usually it's used for eating. And I'm using um, Bostick, which is an all-purpose glue. Again, if you're little, get somebody to help you with this. This glue wouldn't be great for small kiddies. So if you're using this, use it with an adult. And again, that's a better glue to use than PVA. It's just PVA can, can sometimes not be strong enough. So in a well-ventilated room, you're going to put the glue on. I've started this one here. Put on a good dollop of glue. Spread it out, nice and thick. And then take your pasta with the, the pinched part at the top and attach your pasta onto the cardboard. Okay, and don't touch it until it's completely dry. Put it near a window so it can dry out and just place them down. They will stick. Don't be poking at it to see if they are stuck yet. They will stick, but they just need time. So I did a few of these yesterday so that they're well stuck and the rest of them then will take a while to dry. Okay, so you go all the way around your frame with the glue and the pasta and you leave it for at least an hour near a window to dry. And you cover it, they can stick out, see the way these ones are sticking out over the where the photograph will be? They can stick out that side and all around the sides but just not at the bottom because it will make your frame wobbly. Okay, and that's, go all the way around that, stick them on. Okay, and leave it somewhere to dry. Now I'm just going to show you on this one. I'm just going to take Quiva out for a second. So I don't get paint on her. This one has, I've started the painting and I've used acrylic paint for that. So I'm just going to show you the technique with the paint. Small bit of acrylic paint is the best. Now we did try PVA glue and paint. That will work too if you've got lots of time. You need to do a couple of layers with this glue here. This, you'll have seen it in school. PVA and any type of paint. You mix the two of those together. You get a similar effect but it does take more layers. Okay so your frame then you just paint over the pasta Okay, and in underneath, now obviously it's really dry at this stage and nothing is going to come off. You want to make sure that you cover all the parts of the pasta, you don't want any cardboard to be seen. Go right in underneath and into the, all the little gaps in the pasta. 
and you do that all the way around. Don't forget the edges. If you're giving this as a present or you want to put a picture of yourself in it for your nanny or granddad, then you want all the parts of it to be really well painted. Okay, so a big brush, a little bit of acrylic paint, and maybe a little bit of a help, help in hand from mum or dad or whoever's at home, and you'll have that done in no time. I would be expecting it to take you a couple of days in between waiting for it to dry and getting the, the paint on and all of that. It'll take a little, bit while, a little bit of time, so don't be rushing it. Okay, so that paint goes in and all the little gaps and crevices on your frame. And then you'll see I've added a little bit of white here just as a highlight. You can do that too. If you have gold paint, that would be lovely on top of the colour. So again, wash your brush, get your white paint, tiny bit of white paint. Now this acrylic paint, most art shops will have that. Don't buy big tubes of it, just a little tube will do. You don't need a huge amount. Okay, and I'm not using water on my paintbrush. My paintbrush is dry because if you put water on, it's going to run. So just a little bit of dry acrylic paint on the edges just to highlight okay and again like I said if you have silver or gold paint that would be lovely too and I better remind you that you don't have to use just one type of pasta you can use other ones as well as long as you can get them to stick on you can just use uh, an assortment of pasta you could also put in sequins and buttons and ribbons and things like that as well the secret is the glue. If you have a strong glue, you can get anything to stick onto your frame. Okay, so that's the pasta frame. Again, just waiting for it to dry. You can put your picture in then. Once it's well and truly dry, put your picture in. Maybe get some help with making a little stand for the back of it. If I was doing that now, I'd use, again, another piece of cardboard and just fold it in half, nice thick piece, something maybe from a cardboard box, fold it in half and then attach it down at the bottom of your frame when your picture's gone in and it'll help it stand. Okay. Okay, that's the two things we had planned to make today. I hope um, everybody was to keep up with that. I can go I'll just go back one more time through the things that you need for the castle um, before we finish. Um, I can't wait to see some of the pictures of your work. Maybe you'll send them in um, to Superior Libraries. Send in your pictures of the things you've made. Um, maybe you'll get some of your brothers and sisters, family members to help you. Um, that would be great fun. So you need the four tubes for the castle, the four tall kitchen roll tubes. Now they will take a time to a little bit of time to collect so don't panic if you don't have them straight away and then the four toilet roll tubes as well keep them somewhere safe paint them two layers of paint whatever color you like make your roof with a circle of cardboard cut in half and remember i used the cereal bowl to do that draw the circle cut it in half you get a semi-circle which you staple and it sits on top of your your castle. Then we cut in the crenellations into the tubes at the bottom and they were for defence. Um, we stapled it all together once it was dry and then you can draw in your little arrow slit windows onto your castle. Now you could make a couple of those and put them on your windowsill, they'd be really lovely together. This one we found during the week was very handy for holding paintbrushes and pencils so maybe while you're at home doing your art and doing a little bit of schoolwork till the end of June you can hold your pencils and things in there if you want to put a bottom on it simple enough little piece of cardboard for it to stand on and you can paint it put a little bit of grass in a drawbridge add to your castle as well it'd be lovely okay and then the other thing was the pasta frame we had a piece of cardboard stiff cardboard cut out the shape of a photograph in the frame. Then you're using your strong Bostic glue and your pasta 
and you cover the whole frame with your pasta, leave it to dry near a window. When that's dry then, you paint it with your acrylic paint, a couple of layers of that, leave it to dry again, and then you're ready to put your picture inside. Okay, everybody, that's it. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of Tipperary Library's Crinan and Oak activities today. There's loads more to come. And that's it for me. Thank you very much.